Hello there, Sandy Younes from Formserve once again. Welcome to our next how to on IBM My video set on how to use web services on the IBM I. In today's increasingly connected world, web services have been a vital component for businesses to exchange information and services with other organizations and systems. In this video, we will dive into the world of web services on the IBM I, exploring the basics of how they work the tools and the technologies available for building them, and how to utilize these services for your company's benefits. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So sit back and let's get started. A quick intro of what we're gonna achieve. We will create a new web service with a couple of endpoints that use SQL or SQL to return data. Being SQL based, they can be as complicated or as simple as you desire where each endpoint will run a SQL statement. The first endpoint will get all customer records from the table, whereas the second one, we will pass the customer number to the endpoint to retrieve that individual customer. There are a couple of ways we can create a new SQL web service on our IBM I. They are, the first one is browser-based wizard that takes us through all the necessary steps to provide this service. All looks a bit dated to be honest, and certainly not the easiest interface when dealing with many endpoints. I say many, but I really mean more than one. I'll let you make your mind up on that. The second way is by running a shell script called installwebservice.sh. This script can be found on our IFS under the QIBM prod data OS web services slash bin directory. Take a look in there if you don't want to use the wizard. Time for a plug. That directory is full of shell scripts. If you need brushing up on your shell script knowledge, take a look at my playlist on Bash Shells. For this video, we will be using the wizard, and no, not the Merlin wizard. Starting with a picture, paints a thousand, something or others. We have our user who makes a web service call to us. This is known as the request or REQ. The first part it touches on our IBM I is the Apache web server. Next, it will be routed through to the integrated web server. Then service names. There can be more than one service name. Personally, I like to keep it down to only one service name. Keep it simple. Then the individual endpoints will get executed. Again, there can be multiple endpoints, very common. Then for example, it will go to the database to get the data. Then it will flow back with the information that was provided for it. This is the response, or RES, all the way back to the user. IBM has provided a simple wizard to take us through the process of creating all these components. Let me show you this. Back to our browser. I'll point my browser to the Apache interface on port 2001 slash HTTP admin. Beware of the case there, it is case sensitive. Under the common tasks and wizards, I'll take the Create Web Services server to fire up the wizard. And on to step one. I'll give it a decent name. QCUS CDT is the table we will be querying, so that's a good name. And definitely keep ticked the Create HTTP server box and press the next button. I'll leave the ports it requires as all the defaults. Hit next. Hit next again as we will leave all the job description, job queues and routing data as the defaults too. Then we will leave the user profile to run this service as the default user of QW service. Then we get a summary. And away it goes to create the HTTP server and the integrated web server parts of our web service. All nice and easy. Now it has created our first two boxes onto the next one, the Manage Deployed Services. Here we can see that one deployed service has already been created for us, the Convert Temp Service. IBM provides this one service so we can check everything is running correctly. This is an old SOAP service with WSDL. I personally always delete it to get it out of the way, but as always, your choice. Let me add a new deployed service by hitting the Deploy button. Firstly, make sure the web service type is set to rest. We don't want SOAP and tick the SQL as a service tick box. Then hit the next button. 
The wizard will then ask for some database properties, like the default schema and the library list. I'm going to take the defaults here as I will specify the library schema as part of my SQL SQL statement. Next, it is asking for a resource name. This name will make up our URI for the endpoint access. SQL seems a decent name, so I'll leave that be. Now it's asking if we want to secure our web service using TLS or SSL. We will say no to it at this stage as we're going to do this later. At the moment we have no endpoints to our web service, so hit the add button. Then we enter the procedure name for each endpoint and the SQL statement to execute. The procedure name is the name of our endpoint. This name is internal, so we can call it whatever we like but make it relevant. I'll call mine customer. The SQL statement box will validate the syntax, which can be very handy. A quick select everything from qiws.qcustcdt. We could add more if we want to, but let's get this one working first. Press the continue button. So that's our first endpoint. Now press next. On to step five. For our customer endpoint, as it hopefully will return multiple rows, ensure the result type is set to multi-row, then press the next button. On step 6 of 8, nearly there, it asks which HTTP method this endpoint will execute. It defaults to get exactly what we want. The only other field to be aware of is the return type. For that, we want good old JSON. The drop-down does provide other options, but JSON is good for me and the most popular. Press next. Step seven asks what user profile to use to run this SQL statement. Again, I will use the server's job profile. Press the next. Step eight is a summary. Press finish and the service will be created. We can see this installing. All looking good. Let's give it a test. Select the endpoint we just created and click the properties button. From here, copy the base resource URI. As this endpoint uses the HTTP method of GET, we can use a browser to test our endpoint. Paste it into a new browser tab, and da -da, all customers shown. The JSON is neatly formatted for me, as I have a JSON plugin installed on the browser. Pressing the raw format, we can see all the records returned. Very neat. And there we have it, SQL, SQL, Rep Service, running and getting data from our IBMI. Let me add another endpoint, but firstly, a bit of housekeeping. I said earlier the convert temp service was only there for testing, so let's get rid of that. I'll select the convert temp service and press the stop button. Once it's gone to red and stopped status, select it again. Then take the uninstall button. Next, press OK to the horrible browser alert button to confirm the deletion. And yes, that one's a goner. So, what's up next then, Andy? Our first endpoint used the get HTTP method to return all customers. A very simple select statement was run. In this next example, we will still be using a get method, but this time the endpoint would only return one customer. We have to pass it the customer ID as a parameter, then run the SQL statement with a WHERE clause. It will then return just one customer. Firstly, we stop the SQL service. Once stopped, we want the redeploy button as we are adding a new endpoint. Step one, we can leave it as B. As we know, it already works with the SQL name, so no point in changing it. Step two, all the defaults are good, press next. Step three, we leave all the database properties the same, press next. Step four, we want to add an endpoint, so click add. Here we enter a name of our endpoint. These are all internal, so it can be anything you want. I'll call this one get customer, as it's only going to get one customer record. Then into the SQL statement, Select everything from qiws.qcustcdt, where cust num equals question mark. We will be using parameter markers for the customer number. Then press continue 
and select the Get Customer Endpoint. And here, change the Palm0001 parameter to Custom. Then continue, then Next. This is where it gets confusing having more than one endpoint. We are now back with the All Customer Endpoint. We know that is working, so press Next. Now on to the Get Customers Endpoint we have just added. Here change the Result Type drop down to the Single Row option. The rest of the parameters are OK. Press Next. Then back to the Customers. I did say it was confusing. That's OK. Press Next. Then back to our Get Customer Endpoint. Under the URI Path Template we have to specify a backslash and in curly braces, or brackets, whatever you want to call them, the name of our customer ID column, C-U-S-N-U-M. To explain, we use the full URI as we did for the all customers, but with the customer name appended to the end, as shown on the screen somewhere. It will return a JSON string as the result sets again, that's all good. Then change the input source to star path underscore param. Then next, on to step 6. And yes, it goes from step 6 to step 8. Did say it was confusing. Well done IBM. A quick summary and away it goes to create our new web service with the two endpoints. The get all customers and get an individual customer. We can see it is stopped, so select it and press the start button. Up and running. Great result, Andy. Suppose we'd better test it. Let me get the URI again and select the service, then properties and copy the last value. Open a browser and paste the URI and put the custom number at the end. 938472. And we get one record back. Let me change the customer number to see what happens when we don't find a record. Change the end value to a 3 and it returns a null value. Fantastic. The end application using this service can then report back to the user that no customer has been found. And that wraps up this web service on IBM I introduction. In the next video on web services, we will show how we can add new customers and update existing ones. Stay tuned. If you need any further details about open source or IBM I, Check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below and we'd be happy to help. If you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out our website or follow us on social media for more tips and resources. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It would be appreciated. Thank you.